I'd like to ask you right now, if you've learned one new thing about Shura Council today, as you're sitting there in your homes, if you can just raise your hand, I have. <laughs> so I hope inshallah that this has been informational, that you've learned a little bit more about what we do. Right now we're going to shift into our second keynote speaker, who's an adjunct assistant professor of public service of New York University's Robert F. Wagner Graduate School of Public Service. He has a degree in education from the University of Central Oklahoma and a degree in Islamic law from Al-Azhar University in Cairo. He was named as a faith leader to watch by the Center for American Progress in 2016, selected by the Muslim community as one of CNN's 25 most influential leaders, as well as one of 500 of the most influential Muslims by the Royal Islamic Studies Center in 2017. He's also currently the resident scholar at the ICNYU and the founder of the Suhaib Webb Institute of Sacred Sciences. Please join me in welcoming Sheikh Suhaib Webb. Thank you. Zakallah khair. Rahman Rahim, alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Rasulillah. Al Fatihi lima ghulik, al Khatimi lima sabak. Uh, as alaykum, uh, brothers and sisters, mashallah. It's always nice to be uh, with, um, you know, people that I've known for, for decades now, mashallah, from the SoCal area. And more exciting to be part of the Shura Council's gathering tonight. Um, it's important that we appreciate uh, the work that the Shura Council does in allowing us to maintain the capacity to shoulder through a very difficult year. Um, I think the last trip that I took right before COVID kicked in in New York City actually was to Southern California to Irvine. And being able to see Imam Atif and visit uh, Dr. Siddiqui and of course, uh, Sheikh Mustafa Omar and Imam Mark Manley, um, Sheikh Jihad Islah, you know, so many great things happening. Visiting Jirir Bookstore, you know, getting some basbusa uh, somewhere in, in LA uh, with my wife and my daughter, uh, the last trip right before COVID set in. So it's it's certainly um, important to me and powerful to me to be, to be with you this evening. Also understanding the great work that organizing in the last year has, has, has really the, the pressure that has been put on the Shura Council and others to bring together resources, to bring together talent, uh, to bring together services for a community that is so dynamic and so incredible. I want to congratulate um, working with even Sheikh Mustafa on the FIC Council uh, of late and on some issues and just seeing the maturity, uh, the nuance and the growth of, of the Southern California community and then the Shura Council itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran to organize. Right in numerous places in the Quran, he says, for example, like cooperate on good, don't cooperate on evil. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, right? You know, work together towards the truth, and here work together to maintain resilience. And I think this is very important. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, right? Patience is, is a bright light. And 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 dia also means something hot because to have resilience is is often going to be in these kind of difficult situations, these kind of hardships. And I think there's four things that you you want to think about and why it's important to support the work of the Shura Council. First is that we are commanded, as I just mentioned, to help each other shoulder difficulties. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. The very beautiful hadith that a Muslim does not betray a fellow Muslim. Uh, a Muslim does not turn his or her back on a Muslim who may be going through difficult times, who may be faced with challenges, who may be struggling with their iman, who may have fallen into sin, who may have lost a family member, who has gone through any kind of challenge or difficulty. The Prophet said, Yashudu ba'dun ba'da. We are there for one another and we are there to support one another. So individually, right, mashallah. Each and every one of us is responsible. Right? We're all shepherds. We all have a flock that we look after. It's very important that we 
look after one another, right? And help each other stay strong in the face of challenges, to be resilient, right? The second thing is that in order to take that responsibility seriously, we also have to invest in organizations and institution building. Um, when you look at the wealth of talent in these wonderful physicians that we've just seen speaking, and, and God bless all of you for being on the front lines of this pandemic, my wife had COVID, my, my mother-in-law had COVID, and my mother and mother my mother-in-law's mother had COVID. So I I experienced COVID in my home and I understand the great uh, location and importance that physicians in the Muslim community and physicians in general have uh, for all of us. But when you look at Southern California and, and the talent and the resources that you have, um, it's important that you can continue to support the Shura Council so that you can expand the institutional, you can scale, right? let's use that word for California, you can scale the ability to create opportunity for people to shoulder through difficult times, for people to have the capacity for resilience, right? It's something very important. The third thing is I hope to see you continue grow and to con con continue to think outside of the box and something I'll challenge you with as a community. I know your communities very well. I've, you know, I tell people LA is like my home. Yeah, I, I go to LA, I'm invited to LA all the time. From my days in MSA West, you know, and UCLA and Talib Magazine and relationships with people, uh, with Sheikh Naaman at IOK and, you know, just tremendous relationships uh, throughout throughout the last 30 years, is I think it's important that you start to think about youth mentorship. Us old folks, right, we're old folks now, um, you know, I was talking to my daughter earlier and I said, hey, you know, DMX overdosed. And my daughter said, who's DMX? Then I start to realize, oh, you know, I'm getting old. And my daughter's a good thing, doesn't know who DMX is. But it's important, the, the type of questions that I get from young people in particular from LA um, and, and the interactions that I've had with young Muslims in the LA area over the last year, and I'm not sure this has already happened, so if it has, forgive me, causes me to want to challenge you to think about training youth ministry and youth ministry workers. And not having just us old folks right there to work with young people, but think about how can you train young people uh, and maybe in partnerships with some of your local clinicians to at least be on the front lines of being there to support young people. We know that LA, I live in New York City, right? these cities are extremely challenging for young people, right? They, they put a lot of pressure on young people, especially young people of faith. So I think one of the things I would hope you would think about is as you grow forward is how can you begin to professionalize youth ministry that is led and directed by young people who are there to help other young people. The final thing is that I have found uh, the Shura Council and its leadership to always be very open to listening to the needs of the community. It's one of the Shura councils that I've always been impressed with how it its focus is, is serving, right? Its focus has been to look after what are the needs of you in the LA area. So I, I strongly want to encourage you uh, to support them financially, uh, to support them when they need volunteers. As we come out of COVID-19, you know, we're, we're encouraging, you know, cities to think about doing restorative retreats uh, where people can come together. A lot of us lost family. Today, my, my father-in-law lost his mother, uh, in Lebanon. She was she didn't have COVID. She's very old. She's not able to go. Um, a lot of us are going to be coming out of this time with a lot of loss and, and returning to, to life as it was without what we had before is going to be understandably tra traumatic for people. So, I hope that you'll encourage, you know, can, can support the Shura Council and, and, and continue to see that it is really at the forefront of, of doing some great things that are service oriented, right? And that are looking for the needs of people. So these, this is really where we create the capacity for Sabr, right? Sabr is the outcome of a deliberate effort. Sabr, resilience doesn't just happen. So those are the, some, some of the thoughts that I had. And I really want you to think about across the LA area, how can you begin to train and then strategically scale and place youth ministry 
as led by young people uh, through all your masajid as best you can. And then the last point was to, 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 to think about people coming back outside of COVID-19, inshallah, who have lost. Yeah. And how can we help them with restorative love as brothers and sisters in Islam and then truly be there for them? Uh, ask Allah SWT to really increase uh, the great work, uh, the great care that the Shura Council, I've seen it do very deliberately. Uh, ask Allah to bless uh, the LA community. You know, I have a fondness for, for the LA community. Um, a lot of love, a lot of appreciation, and a lot of respect for, for the work that happens uh, in your beautiful city. Uh, may Allah SWT increase you, uh, increase you in khair, and increase us all in the capacity for resilience. As we continue to shoulder through through difficult times, barakallahu feekum. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakallahu sayyidi Muhammad wa sallam wa alaykum wa